Hello, welcome to part six of the Brick Breaker tutorial. So now we have a ball moving around the screen and you can see in the bottom left hand corner we have score and in the bottom right hand corner we have lives and if I miss the ball our lives are going to go down by one. So the immediate problem we need to fix is that we need the ball to reappear if the ball falls through the floor and if we still have lives left. So let's take a look at that first. So we're going to go into the ball and we are going to alter some code in here. Um, we are going to say if the ball goes through the floor. So remember, this is the part of the code that checks to see if the ball goes basically too low, right, through the bottom wall. And what we've been doing is we've been taking the ball away. But that's not actually what we want to do, right? We don't want to take the ball away because we want this game to have extra lives. So I'm gonna take this code out for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away a life, but then I wanna to check to see if I have any lives left. So I'm gonna have an if statement that says if something, then I'm gonna do something. And this is just kind of general form for me. Um, what I do is I say if, and then I'm getting ready to put my condition in here between these brackets, and then whatever I want to happen is going to be down here inside these curly brace brackets, okay? And so the condition is if the lives are greater than zero. So how do I do that? Well, I know where the lives counter is. I know it's in my world. So I'm going to type my world dot and then control space and you can see I have access to lives and then a dot and then control space again and this is all the stuff I can get from the counter I want to get the value of the counter so if the value of the counter is greater than zero or sorry I lied is equal to zero then that means the game is over right so basically I want to continue to take lives away if the lives hit zero then we're gonna go you know we're gonna say game over so we're gonna have to make a new world now if it's not what needs to happen is the ball needs to you know become playable again so in the game if the ball goes through the floor and I took that condition away so don't worry about that behavior but if the ball goes through the floor I want the ball to appear in the middle again and start moving. So if the ball goes through the floor, yes, I want to take away a life, but I also want to say, hey, ball, reappear in the middle. So I'm going to steal this little bit of code here that says set location. And remember, we're coding the ball. So if the ball goes through the floor, let's take away a life. And if the lives are zero, we're going to end the game and we'll get to that soon. But if not, if we get to this point, so let's do an else here, meaning if the lives are not zero, then I want to put that ball back, let's say, just above the paddle. So let's remember, um, actually, let's put the ball back in the original position. So originally the ball was at 200, 300. So if the ball falls through the floor, and we have some lives left, let's set the location of our ball to 200, 300, like so. Okay, so let's see what happens in this case. So we'll reset, run, let's let the ball fall through, and you can see there, it worked. The ball is appearing where it started, which is great. Only problem is it's going down. We want that ball to go up so let's just fix that so back to the ball we go and if it turns out that the ball fell through i'm going to lower that ball just a touch so i'm going to make that a little lower maybe 340 and i'm going to make the y move value um, i want it to go up the screen so since i'm subtracting the move value i want my move value to be positive because if i make the move value positive I will be subtracting, which means uh, it's going to go up the screen because the value is going to get lower. So I'm going to 
steal a page out of this book again and put it here and let's see if that works there we go so if the ball falls through oh no i didn't make it in time it will start up again and now that i'm looking at it that ball might be a little too low i might want the ball to start a little higher so what i can do to cheat actually i want the ball to start about this high just off the paddle but going up so i can inspect that spot and it tells me that the y value is 322 so is that what i made let's check 340 yeah let's make it 320 and now i'm pretty happy with the ball's position so i lose a life the ball starts again i can keep playing lose another life and it looks pretty good lose a life and now we have to deal with what happens at zero so if the lives do hit zero what we want to do is we want to do we want to say game over so this is the first time that we're going to make a new world so i'm going to go up here to the world super class i'm going to right click click new subclass and i'm going to say uh, game over i could also call it lose world whatever i want and uh, let's pick a background so we'll pick uh, i don't know we can pick sure the space background we'll hit okay and so that right now will be our game over world now later i could pick a i go on the internet and get a picture that says game over and have that be my background but we'll just use this one for now um, and now i go back to my ball code and if the lives get to zero then what we want to do is we want to change worlds so if we type greenfoot that gives us access to the greenfoot library and if i hit control space one of the things that you'll see is built in is the ability to set world and what i want to do is i want to set world and i'm going to create a new instance of the game over world so that line of code right there should take us to game over world let's see if it happens run it gonna lose three lives here one two and the moment of truth hey there we go we went to game over world and i could put a message there saying game over and i will do that later but the idea is we did switch worlds which is great now the other place we want to go is what if we win so i'm going to make another world and i'll call this win world and we'll just give it a background of marble sure and how do we know if we win well in this case we know there are 40 bricks on the screen so i can go to my ball and here is where i hit a brick so what I, one thing there are multiple ways to do this but one thing i can do is i can tell my ball to have another variable. My ball already has a variable that keeps track of the x move value and the y move value. I'm going to make another variable called brick count and that's going to start at zero. So at the very beginning it starts at zero. Okay and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say every time we hit a brick we want to add one to that variable. So the way I do that in Java is I simply do that. That's short form for saying, and I'll just make a comment here, add one to the brick count variable. If you're thinking to yourself, why didn't you put dot add like you did here? It's because score is a counter object, whereas brick count is just a simple variable. All it does is hold on to an integer number and we can add to it and we can decrease it and that's really it a counter is a whole different thing and it has built-in methods like get value and set value and all that kind of stuff and add but a brick count is a little simpler so i'm going to increase the brick count and once i increase it i'm going to do a check and if the brick count is equal to 40 that means that i've won because I know there are 40 bricks on the screen. So if I win, I'm going to copy this line right here, 
because if I win, I don't want to go to game over world, but I want to use the same code to get to win world. Now, because there are 40 bricks on the screen, it's going to take me a while to hit them all. Just to see if this works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly change this to 10. And that means if I hit 10 bricks, I should go to win world. So let's just test it out this way so you don't have to watch me hit 40 bricks. And then later I'll change it back to 40. All right, so rather than counting them out loud, we should go when our score hits 100, because that means we've hit 10 bricks. So we need three more. One more. There we go. And you can see we've now gone to win world. So now you know how to create a new kind of background, if you will, or world, if you lose and also if you win.